Good evening, everyone. It's uh, Nigel Guillaume here, Lead Training Programme Director for uh, St. Mary's uh, Training Scheme and accredited RCA trainer for HEE London. I'm really, really happy to do our second audio interview with a successful RCA candidate. Uh, May wish really happy that she has smashed the RCA um, and wanted really to uh, get her thoughts on how to approach this exam, especially for those of you who are going to be sitting this coming autumn. May wish welcome. How are you doing? Thank you, Nigel. No, I'm doing absolutely amazing. Um, oh, brilliant. Especially after brilliant. the results. Absolutely. So firstly, happy Eid and a huge congratulations on your pass. Now, your score was really, really quite impressive, considering that on the last sitting, you missed it by a couple of marks. Your, your mark has jumped up by 40 plus into the 180s. What do you think changed uh, from the last sitting? What, what were the game changers for you? So obviously, there were a lot of learnings. Um, the first and foremost, um, it's a very devastating outcome always to uh, fail an exam. So first Absolutely. thing is you have to uh, put your thoughts together rather than blaming on the system. I reflected on what I should be doing next. Okay. Although the feedback statements are not very useful per se, yes. but I took each and every statement with a pinch of salt okay. and just avoided that. So my biggest thing was uh, I was been given an impression that it's okay to submit more than 12 minutes. Whereas I think what I got it was I was getting with them back to the management by 10 minutes, probably. So okay. All right. that definitely I just, you know, religiously, I would just discard all the recordings that would have gone above uh, 13 minutes. And I'm doing still a lot of important stuff in those minutes. I understand. Yeah. So and that's actually really important. So that wasn't even highlighted necessarily in our first podcast with our, our, our previous candidate, that time management is key. And I know that we talked on the course about this, that really by the seventh to eighth minute, you definitely need to be in that second half of the section, don't you? Because if you don't score in clinical management, you can't. Absolutely. Pass. Absolutely. So I reflected on time management. My trainer was absolutely and all the people around me were absolutely convinced that um i would have passed it in first attempt uh, but the reason and they were very um sure about my clinical management skills but if the examiner has not heard what i've done in management then i don't blame them failing me in clinical management right yeah. so, so they will only mark up to 12 minutes only 12 minutes that's the absolute key exactly so regardless of how much your data gathering is uh, important so just like what you said on seven and eight minutes mm. um you have to start your management um so obviously it's very absolutely crucial that you have data gathering to make your diagnosis because sometimes they give you feedback saying that you did not have enough information to make the diagnosis so you yes. have to avoid that as well Yes. But uh, you have to be very super selective in the cases. So yeah. two things are all, always kept in mind. There are cases where I have not done well, and there are cases where patients have not done, and there are good patients, basically. Um, yeah. There is so much you can beat about uh, beat yourself about that, but there's, this is something that is out of our control. So yes. more and more I recorded, um, I was more resilient, I persevered, mm -hmm. I, I complained less. There were okay. really bad days. Yeah, um, but yeah. my tra trainers kept saying that, you know, there will be weeks you'll be dry of consultations and there'll be weeks yeah. where you'll have consultations. Yeah. Second yeah. Um, thing that I would absolutely give credit to you. Um, when oh, I, you. my, my exam, my uh, supervisor is, is a TPD in, uh, um, in one of the East London and he usually is not getting into courses, but he, mm. I took your eight AKT courses, but last time I was, I was in rush. I didn't take any course. Um, and for an AKT, the only course I took was yours. So when he said, take Nigel's course, I was thinking, oh my God, I should have done it last night. Mm. Um, and I was in a very bad shape when I mm. came to you in terms mm. of my emotional and mental health mm. so you I'm a kind of person I like objectivity and yes. looking at you you're always objective although this exam is so subjective yeah but you were so objective about it and you were really you you gave the tough love but at the same time I got the hope from you 
Thank you. That's that's really kind of you to say. And I think one of the messages there is we, we need that kind of objectivity when we're marking. You've already talked about your case selection that actually if you're not in that second half with clinical management, just you just can't submit, can you? There's just no possibility of doing it, uh, even though the flow of the consultation might be quite good. I mean, uh, I suppose wrapping up for those people who have just kind of missed the mark and obviously very upset and distressed as, as you were in your last sitting, they're now um, you know, having to wait uh, several months uh, before sitting the autumn RCA. What would be your kind of biggest message uh, to, to these people to, to help them attain the success that you've attained? I would say time management again. Um, okay. Your um, story before the symptom really mm. helped. Okay. I was doing it last time around, but you emphasizing in, in that just gave me the basis, you know, solid basis to work on that. I think examiners like it really, uh, really like that because you have to get their perspective mm. and they we want to distinguish it from a GP consultation than yes. from an a &E consultation or probably that's a medical right. interview. A absolutely. Gosh, that's, that's really hit the nail on the head because obviously patients don't come in nice little boxes, do they? So they're going to have a lot of information in their notes and time management is actually being about looking in their notes, knowing where we are in their journey in addition to knowing where we are in terms of the actual actual consultation. Um, Mesh, I just want to say a huge thank you for coming on to the Mental RCA audio podcast and a huge congratulations for that amazing, amazing pass. I wish you all the best moving forwards in your career. Um, thank you so much for your time. No problem, Nigel. Thank you so much for uh, being so kind and guiding us through. You're doing really well. Thank you Thank for you so all much. the support. You might have helped a lot of people. And I will absolutely, in both my exams, you were, you were of great help. Thank you so much. That's really kind. All right. Take care of yourself. Bye. All right. No problem. Bye-bye then. So a huge thank you to Mayo there for her insight. And what she really stressed was time management, giving yourself enough time to record, giving your enough time to actually case prime and actually looking into the patient's notes to know where you are in terms of the narrative. So you can use that information strategically and making sure actually you give enough time for clinical management. So being reactive in how you mark is key. Uh, we can certainly teach you how to mark your own RCA consultations using my modified uh, mental RCA mark sheet so you can give yourself an objective score. So I'm um, really glad to have had Mayesh on, so glad to have had you guys on. I hope you found this one useful. Do look out uh, for the next one. Again, resources can be found uh, on the website, uh, mentalmededucation.com in terms of AKT and RCA courses. Well, enjoy the rest of your evening and we will catch up very soon. Many thanks.